We're going to talk about shapings and finger waves. And it's simply teaching you how to make the hair do what you want it to do instead of doing what it wants, it wants to do. Um, finger waves were the rage in the 20s and the 30s. I, I'm sure y'all don't remember all that. But they have went out of fashion. A lot of people say they're coming back in fashion. However, whether it is or not, we're going to have to learn how to do them because they say it te teaches us to control the hair, finger dexterity, coordination, and all those good things. So the first thing we want to do is make sure our hair is wet. And the wetter it is, really, the better it works. It keeps our gels from getting sticky. But if you would like to use a part in your hairstyle, it's best to use a person's natural part. These mannequins do not have natural parts because a part occurs where the hair from here down starts sloping downward and people will start in the middle or to one side. It may be diagonal. You know, maybe some of them will go real far back. But you just comb the hair back straight down and then put your hand on the crown area and push forward. And like I said, all of these follicles shoot straight out so it's not going to have a natural part. But on a human's, it will part right wherever that natural part falls because the hair directions change. For the uh, sake of finger waves and shapings, I'm going to use a side part because beginning, it helps a lot to have a heavy side of hair to work on. And I'll show you what I mean by heavy side. Whenever we part the hair, we've got a lot more hair on this side than we do this side. So our forming always starts on the heavy side of the head, or what we call the heavy side. We're going to apply some gel, or setting medium, setting lotion. And I've got here a real heavy gel, and it works well on mannequins because this hair is more coarse. But if we were to put this gel on somebody with fine hair, it would just weight their hair down. It wouldn't do anything. If we've got a, a live client that we're going to do finger waves or shapings on, we're going to use the Karai gum, and this is what the book talks about. And it's kind of a slimy substance. But if you dry the hair with that on it, when you take it out from under the dryer, it will just brush out and be just as soft as it was when you started. You will not know you put any setting medium on it, but it lets you control the hair. Now, we only want to put gel in a small area and add it as we go because it has a tendency to dry out and get flaky. So we only apply it to the area we're working on. And the first thing we're going to do is a shaping. And a shaping is usually used whenever we're going to do pin curls. If we would like a flat area, because the shaping is going to always dry and be flat, cannot get any bounce out of it because we've dried it flat to the head. And all we do, we can get a C shaping by combing the hair into a C shape. And with that, we've curled the hair around and we would do pin curls into the open edge of it. You know how C is, it has an open edge and this is the same way. So if we'd go back here and start pin curling, we'd close ourselves in. If we'll start at the open end, we can just form our pin curls which is what we'll be going into next without any problems. Cutting the hair out and putting in pin curls. So that is a shaping. A shaping can be anywhere on the head. Shapings are often used on the side area, coming straight back and then putting some curls behind, um, kind of behind the ear. And that gives a real flat effect in the side area. Now, for finger waves, also shapings may be um, horizontal, vertical, or diagonal. And we could simply, we also call this a shaping. So I've got it running diagonally, and we could also put them vertically. But let's go into our finger waves now. And we'll pick up more on shapings as we go into pin curls. Again, we want to apply our gel in a small area only. It's easier to work with gel if you've got it in a container where you dip into it. But for sanitation purposes, if you've got a container and you dip into that gel with your spatula one time, that's the only gel you can get. You've got to have enough 
spatulas to have a clean one every time you dip into it. So we prefer the bottle application. That way we never put anything in the gel and we just squirt it out and then we can use it right over and over. So we want to make sure our gel is in the hair really good and we're going to start our finger waving. And to start with finger waves, we're not going to worry about taking them all the way around the head. That will come with advanced styling. What we want to learn to do now is to make a finger wave. And I always like to come down into the curve of the forehead so the first wave will go forward and come down like a small bang so that we cover up this area here. And I'm going to comb my hair back. My finger has got to be held firmly, and you can lay your whole hand down. And we're going to only use the large teeth of the comb to give a coarse finger wave. That's the laws of finger waving that you only use the coarse teeth. I always have my finger down. I'm going to comb, push up a little bit, hold the hair, and if you notice I'm holding firmly, and comb back. I do like to comb with my fine teeth, so you'll see me flipping the comb a lot. And it's okay to comb with your fine teeth, but not form your wave with your fine teeth. So I've got start of a wave. I'm going to put my finger back over the same area part of the way and make sure it's laid down tightly all the way back. And I'm going to comb again, and I'm going to meet that wave. I'm going to pinch, and I'm going to comb back. And again, I'm going to flip my comb and make my hair smooth. The mannequins are going to have splits in them no matter how hard you try to get them out because of that growth where it all just shoots straight out. So don't be overly concerned about that. And I'm going to move back a little further. I'm going to again comb my hair. The wave forward. Comb. Comb back. And I'm going to put my finger down again. I'm going to comb and comb back. And I want you to watch my movements from the first finger wave. I have already prepared for my second finger wave, and you can see right where my second one will go. Because in doing this one, I prepped for the next one. You see what I'm talking about? I've already got the wave for it. I didn't want to call your attention to that to start with. And you may get up and walk around if you want to to come to the other side. Um, so you can see. Since I've already got my formation started for my second one, I'm going to put my finger right in that wave, and again, I'm coming on the forehead. My next wave goes back. So I'm going to comb back a little bit, then I'm going to comb. I'm going to lay my comb down. I'm going to pinch, and I'm going to comb forward. And again, I'm going to come with my fine teeth. And you can see the finger wave taking place, but again, I'm already forming for my next one. So as I do this one, I, I form the area for my next wave. So I'm going to put my finger down again, get my comb over, comb. And you do not pinch real tightly as far as pulling it up. And I'm going to show you some of the common mistakes made. There again, we've got our finger wave going. Comb again. And all I want you to do at this point is finger wave up and down this side until you can form them well. After that, we're going to take this ridge and bring it all the way around the head. And there's two ways to do that. I can take this ridge and bring it all the way around, or I can't, because I don't have any perception of distances. And when I try to bring mine all the way around, it winds up over here. So what I do is bring it halfway, the crown area, then I come over here and start, and then I've got a meet in place, and I can shoot for that as long as I can see something. But some people can take it all the way around, but I seem to get to dragging low when I try all the way around. And once you place that first one, then you've got something to shoot for, and you can go all the way around. The second one I can go all the way around with. All right. We come again, and all we're going to do, and we're kind of getting out of our gel, so we may want to apply some more, because the more that's in it, the easier it molds for us. And that's all finger waves are. It's simply molding and directing the hair to make it do what we want it to do. But I want you to watch the fingers and what's going on with them. So we're coming back. We've got one wave that goes forward, another wave that goes back. And finger waves should be a smooth motion and rhythm, just like music. 
And um, when we get into hair design, you're going to see that there is a rhythm in all hairdos that are done correctly. And we've got to make sure the ryth rhythm is right with this. And what students have a tendency to do, I'll see if I can show you without tearing mine out. And this will look all right for a moment, but it doesn't have the rhythm. They'll take the comb and go. And then the next one will go. And they say, well, it looks good, but there's a lot of problems with it. Hair, where the base of the hair is, you start there and it should be a smooth rhythm from it. Here I've got hair that starts here and it winds up all the way over here. It loses its rhythm. And after a while, we're going to lose all of our hair over directing and we're going to wind up with the ball, ball places in it. So we want to be real careful about our rhythm. The next wave, and at this point you can start at either place because you've got reference points now. But I like to start at the front always as I go down the side. Put my finger down, comb, and watch the comb lay down and I change fingers. And what students often like to do is sit here with this and keep pulling this up and pulling this up until they've got a high ridge and then comb it. And the problem with that again is you begin to see the hair underneath knotted and you begin to see ball places in it. So once you put your fingers on it, don't work your fingers to pinch up your ridge. Okay? All right. This is horizontal finger waving. Diagonal to me is a little bit prettier, but when we had to do them on state boards, you had to do horizontal to show that you knew the difference. They, they're big into following directions. They'd say, do horizontal finger waves on one side and the back of the head. They give specific directions. But a lot of our, um, not a lot of our clients, but some of our clients now would like to have finger waves and you can see the diagonal gives a much more pleasing effect on the side. It seems to give more movement to the hair. And again, watch the fingers and notice that I'm not pinching up. I'm just holding on to it to keep it from moving. And we come. And if you realize you got a little mistake, all you got to do is go back, work it in, and come back as long as you're holding your hands tightly. Also, a lot of students try this, just going ahead and putting this finger down and then do doing this. Don't do that because it doesn't allow you to grasp the hair or as much pressure on it. You can't apply as much pressure with this finger as you do with this finger. So when you start combing, and this is what they're talking about with finger dexterity and making them uniformly. When you start combing, use this finger because you've got a firmer hold on the head. Comb, push up, lay your comb down and comb back. And repeat. Comb. Swap fingers, comb back, and swap your comb around if you want to. And that's your diagonal finger wave. All right. Y'all ready to try it?